Hey, I'm Anthony Romano, and I'm going to tell you in this video if you should consume coconut oil while you're fasting. So people talk about this quite a lot. I mean, there's I've seen ads like Terry Crews is like saying that he eats coconut oil and stuff like that while he fasts, and I mean, the guy's in great shape. Ah! Uh, who's my electric shaver? But I got a question on this because people were saying I train in a fasted state, or at least I tried to, but I felt like passing out every time. What can I consume? before training without spiking insulin or breaking a fast to negate the blackout scenario. Credit to Paul van der Weyer for wording this question so perfect for a video, so thank you, and thank you to LaShawn Mack for helping him out with the response of the coconut oil and black coffee. But here's the thing, I'm going to answer this question in this video and it's going to be very quick and I'm going to give you some tips to improve your intermittent fasting so that you can work out better and experience better performance when you're fasting before i get into this video like it and you will help me to show my videos to more people on youtube because that's all you have to do to help me out that's how the youtube algorithm works let's get into the video So when we're talking about not breaking the fasted state yet consuming some sort of boost, a lot of people opt for coconut oil and it works because it provides medium chain triglycerides, which basically go to your liver, get digested and provide immediate fuel for the brain and for the body. If you're keto adapted. Now, if you're experiencing blackout or, you know, problems when you're fasting, it's because you're not keto adapted. It's because you're not used to lower blood sugar from fasting. The best way to negate this is by consuming electrolytes. So this is going to be sodium and potassium, but the potassium has to be in the chloride form. Best salt recommendations are going to be pink salt, so Himalayan salt, Redmond salt, or Celtic salt. And listen carefully, because the doses of everything I'm telling you in this video are things you have to control very carefully. If people are new to these tactics and you consume too much salt and too much MCT, you are going to shit yourself. So do not do this, okay? Too much MCT or coconut oil is going to make people have GI upset because they're not used to digesting so much fat at one time. And it's the basically the quickest digesting fuel out there. MCT. Fat is 9 calories a gram. Carbs are 4. When you consume fat this quickly, it's going to be so much energy if you overdo it and your body's going to shit some out. So you don't want any bathroom problems. And there's a similar explanation for salt, but I'm going to stop talking about people shitting themselves at this point in the video. So... <laughs> You want to negate blood sugar drops. You need to get better control over your blood sugar. And one way to do it is by consuming exogenous ketone supplements, right? They serve a similar purpose to MCTs because MCTs will turn into, coke, into ketones in your body. Coconut oil can provide some MCTs, but here's the thing. Coconut oil contains mostly the crappier quality MCT, which is lauric acid. This is basically referred to as C12, it has 12 carbons. And it is not, the only reason they call it medium chain is because they, you know, scientists were looking at it and saying, yeah, like, well, it's about halfway through the amount of carbons it can have. So it's medium chain. But in reality, the true MCTs are C8 and C10, which is capric and caprylic acid. And essentially, these are the ones that are, that are going to provide the most benefit for actually perform, performing well. So C8 is basically the best kind you can get, and actually you can get it in this brain octane oil or other brands i just prefer the bulletproof one because i know the filtration process is top standard top quality but uh, i have links to those in the description but here's the thing you are far better off using a true mct oil rather than a coconut oil but be careful when you're buying an mct oil because what's going to happen is most brands are going to fill it up with c12 lauric acid and tell you oh yeah it's mct oil go get it but in reality, you're basically getting coconut oil that's just glorified. Now, back to the electrolytes, okay? The electrolytes. When you are not consuming food and you are in a fasted state, your body's blood sugar is going to drop a bit, right? Okay. Not the end of the world, okay? Unless you're doing it for days on end and you're not used to it. Your body regulates sodium and sugar in sort of synergistic ways. So when you're too low in blood sugar, your body's going to jack up the basically water retention, sodium retention, because it wants to keep your blood sugar stable. And if you were too low in sodium, your body's going to jack up the insulin so that you artificially hold on to more hydration, and that's going to make you hungrier. And basically, dropping the sugar is going to make you want to pass out. So when people say have black coffee, yes, black coffee might raise your blood sugar a little bit because of the cortisol from coffee. 
that might be beneficial for you, but you're going to be dehydrated still. Dehydration is still a problem and diuretics like coffee are going to make that problem worse. So I would recommend a sodium potassium mix for reasons I'll explain in a moment, but mostly for hydration and also MCT oil. This is the best way to improve upon the whole coconut oil intermittent fasting trend that people are talking about. You get a better version of coconut oil that's going to provide more energy and then you get electrolytes that are specifically two that are going to be powerful enough to create extra hydration and also get better workout performance because sodium and potassium potassium literally has a pump in your intracellularly in your muscles and if you don't have enough potassium you are not going to get as good of a pump but here's the thing first of all you don't want to overdo potassium because a if you pound back a bottle of potassium your heart will beat so fast that you'll probably die that's literally what they give people for lethal injections and stuff like that but at least maybe like 50 years ago, because I'm pretty sure it's a little bit, you know, risque and a little bit unethical nowadays when we're talking about euthanizing people. Anyways, back to the main topic of this video. <laughs> when we're looking at sodium potassium, sodium is going to be the main, you know, provider of water retention and hang on to hydration, especially when your sugar's low. So when people talk about hypertension issues, it, a lot of times it's from high combinations of both sugar and sodium, not necessarily just the sodium. So you need enough sodium if you are fasting because you are closer to a ketogenic state, a state where you're not consuming sugar. So when we're looking at the hydration benefits, you want to consume about less than a, a half teaspoon of salt, so sodium, and less than a half teaspoon of potassium chloride, chloride, so the salt form, not capsules, because if you consume potassium capsules and they're gel capsules on an empty stomach, you will run into stomach ulcer problems. So don't do it consume the chloride but when we're talking about consuming half of a teaspoon of each the reason why i'm saying half of a teaspoon is because it's a conservative estimate but it's going to be adequate enough to provide extra hydration and performance benefits when you buy a gatorade supplement the doses of electrolytes are so low because they don't want to risk people having to shit themselves so they have to put in the electrolytes but low dose them and they're actually even lower than the most conservative dose of sodium and potassium salts that you can get because of this. Because every time you supplement with an electrolyte, you are depleting other electrolytes. When you supplement with sodium, you deplete potassium. When you supplement with potassium, you deplete magnesium. When you supplement with magnesium, you deplete calcium. So these electrolyte supplements will throw them all together. And they just have to low dose everything so you don't have any bathroom problems. And also so that they don't, you know, if they only put sodium in there, you're going to be depleted of potassium. And they just try to basically play damage control with all of them. The simplest way to do this is to get sodium and potassium and perhaps magnesium. But that's kind of where I would put the cutoff point. After magnesium, with such small doses of these things, it's not going to be the end of the world. And you can get enough magnesium later. You can get enough calcium later from other foods. It's not going to dysregulate you if you're doing intermittent fasting or even prolonged fasting unless you are, you know, really pushing it for a long time. But when we're looking at sodium potassium, this is going to play out very well for muscle pumps. This is going to play out very well for hydration and overall energy because if your sodium is too low, your cortisol is going to skyrocket to raise your blood sugar. Your insulin is going to skyrocket to make you hang on to more hydration. And this is going to make you hungrier. So you are not going to be in the right mind to train in the right, you know, state. So when we're talking about consuming a half teaspoon of each, you could even go lower. I have people when I'm, that I'm coaching, when they're fasting, I will have them consume a half teaspoon of sodium and potassium chloride. But even then, if they're eating, I would say a quarter teaspoon, perhaps. If you're going to be eating a couple hours later, perhaps your levels of water retention from the day before, if you're somebody who's having a hard time with this, are generally higher because you're not used to abstaining from food for a long period of time. So I would say even look into a quarter teaspoon of each if you plan on eating within the next couple hours after the workout. So in general, start with a conservative amount of a quarter teaspoon or a third teaspoon of sodium chloride, potassium chloride. Start off with that. Try your workout. See how you feel. If it's not enough, the next day, try a quarter, a, a half teaspoon. Sip on this slowly. Do not pound it back because then you will run into those problems I was speaking about, about people shitting themselves. So don't do it. Keep a counter on how many times I've said that in this video. So don't overdo this and start off small and don't pound it all back at one time. Start with a small dose and sip it and also use your coconut oil slash MCT, which would be better. And that is the best way you can go about, you know, optimizing an intermittent fast. This is a way to get training wheels on your intermittent fasting. Okay, so that was it for this video. Hopefully that's enlightened you to better alternatives to the coconut oil fasting technique. If it did, like the video, subscribe to me. 
and follow me on Instagram. That's all I ask of you, and leave me some comments and questions. I'll do my best to get back to you. I'm Anthony Romano. Peace.